All right, YouTube, so we are back, of course, talking about some Final Fantasy VII Remake, but more specifically talking about Intergrade slash the Intermission DLC slash Yuffie DLC slash how many goddamn names do we need for stuff. Anyways, today we have a brief interview with co-directors Hamaguchi and Toriyama talking about the Intermission DLC, the Yuffie DLC, talking about the Moogle cape that she wears. They mention mini games. They also talk about her stealing materia, or at least the subject of her stealing materia. As always with the channel, we just hop right into it. So what do you think makes Yuffie such a popular character? In the original Final Fantasy VII, Yuffie was the type of person who would appear wherever and whenever she pleased, and you'd never know whether or not she was going to join you. Even if she does join you, you could never let your guard down because you didn't know when she'd steal your materia. That makes her quite different from your other allies in the fight against Shinra and Sephiroth. She's always after materia, honest about her desires, and never afraid to show that. It's a combination of traits that leads to unpredictable and unexpected twists, and I think one of the reasons she's become such a popular character. And on the subject of her being popular, it's very true. I think I've heard somewhere that in Japan she's like a super popular character. It sounds like Vincent, and it may be because they were optional characters in the original game, so you might have done a couple playthroughs as a kid and didn't even know that these optional characters existed, and you find out all this time later. Maybe there's just kind of that appeal there because of them being secret slash hidden characters. And you also have the contrast of, like, Yuffie being a pretty funny character all around, and then Vincent being, like, dark and brooding and badass, and he turns into these monsters and shit. Like, they're very different compared to the rest of our team, and maybe that's, again, part of the appeal. How does the Yuffie we meet in FF7R episode intermission <laughs> differ from the original game? It's very much the same Yuffie we all know and love that appears in Midgar. She's still elusive and still does things at her own pace, but she's also fired up by her desire to exact revenge for a homeland of Wutai and to execute her mission as a ninja. When I think about Yuffie, the first things that come to mind are a materialistic materia hunter who's not comfortable or proficient with vehicles. Materia is Yuffie's motivation, and I was mindful to bring that aspect of her personality to the forefront in every part of the new episode, from the story to even the mini-games. Alright, so a couple things to unpack here. First off, the first part of Hamaguchi saying that when he thinks of Yuffie, he thinks of uh, somebody that's not proficient or comfortable with vehicles. Like... What is that in reference to? I mean, is that something from the original game? Because I've not used Yuffie a lot on my team throughout the years. I've used everybody, obviously, at one point or another. But I just don't recall that piece of dialogue from the original game. Is that something from Dirge of Cerberus or just some other extended lore? Like, I don't recall any... That's not what I think of when I think of Yuffie. I don't think of Yuffie in vehicles at all. I don't know. That just really stuck out to me. Uh, as for Hamaguchi, you want to make sure that, you know, the character of, of Yuffie is portrayed accurately. Her being all about materia and that being a big part of this DLC is good. That's what you want. That's what you expect from Yuffie. And in regards to that as well, he says from the story to the mini games. So for starters, he says mini games, which would imply there's more than one mini game within this DLC, which is interesting. And we've talked about this for a little bit now because of like the piece of like lore we got about or description or whatever for the character of Polk within the DLC, who's really into the Fort Condor board game. So a lot of people have interpreted that description as them probably taking the Fort Condor minigame from the original FF7, which really wasn't overall that popular, and turn it into some other kind of minigame within Remake, and maybe something else will happen differently at Fort Condor instead of playing that minigame. So I think Hamaguchi confirming that there are minigames within the DLC kind of confirms this like Fort Condor board game minigame theory. But that remains to be seen, of course. I'm not going to say anything's confirmed until we have actual confirmation of that. But I'm kind of curious, since it says mini games, what the other ones are. Is it just going to be us getting to use Yuffie for some of the mini games we had in the original FF7 remake? Like, can she play darts? Can she do the whack-a-box challenge thing? Can she go to, to Walmart and do some of the workout stuff or something? Some new workout mini game or something? I don't know. I also think something worth taking note of is that Hamaguchi says that her you know motivation being materia comes through within the story in the mini game. so I'm assuming that whatever mini games you can play within this DLC, you'll be able to win materia. I think that makes a lot of sense. You don't? You gotta be kidding me, dude. And that's why you should silence your damn phone before you start recording. Anyways, I think it makes a lot of sense because I can't imagine Gil's gonna be a huge factor with this DLC. It is only a two-chapter DLC. Maybe you can get some, maybe there are some shops or vending machines that you can interact with for potions and stuff like that. But I feel like we're not really going to need money. So that makes sense why the prize for a lot of stuff would be Materia instead. Anyways, continuing on. Oh no, does that mean she's going to steal our stuff in the new episode too? Toriyama, yes, in the original Final Fantasy VII, she caused quite the hassle because she stole our allies' Materia. Don't worry, in the new episode, Yuffie's the protagonist, so rest assured you don't have to worry about your valuable Materia getting taken away. Hamaguchi, actually, we'll be introducing some new Materia that wasn't included in Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's pretty exciting. And this is where they kind of baited me with the damn Twitter account because they tweeted out about this article and they mentioned why we don't have to worry about our material being stolen, which is something that happens in the original game. It's something that a lot of people are 
maybe anticipating when it comes to part two, assuming that we have a reset at the beginning of part two, back to level one, having to level up our material and our, our weapons again and stuff like that, that Yuffie could be one of the catalysts for that. She's the one that steals our material, which is why we don't have any material when the game starts. So that's what I thought that that tweet was in reference to. But they're just talking about her not stealing material within this DLC, which I don't think anybody was expecting anyways. I mean, based on the original game, she doesn't even steal our material until we get into the Wutai area. Then we got to chase her around the town of Wutai to get our material back. But again, I don't think anybody was necessarily expecting the DLC to be the part where she steals it from us. We're kind of expecting it maybe at the beginning of Part 2. But I guess, in theory, with intermission being like this bridge between Part 1 and Part 2, she could, I guess, technically steal our material at the end of the DLC. That way we know going into the next game, into Part 2, we were not going to have any material. So I guess that does kind of make sense in a way. But according to Toriyama, that's not going to happen, at least within this DLC. And as for the subject of, you know, a a reset or stuff carrying over between games, it's one of those things that just needs an answer. There's, like, a couple of questions that are, like, critical when it comes to the remake project. One of them being, how many games are there? And the other thing being, is shit carrying over between games? That's something a lot of people want to know. They still have never given us an answer yet. I think the best thing they can do, and I've discussed this in the past before, is when it comes to part two, just give the choice. Like, let me do a fresh start if I want to, or let me carry stuff over if I want to. And part of why I've always said that I think that part two is going to have either the option for a fresh start or it's going to be a fresh start forcefully is because it's going to be a separate game. You're going to be able to walk into the store and buy Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two or whatever the hell it's called separate from part one. You're not going to need part one to play part two, which is why I don't think there's going to be have to be any sort of carryover. Yuffie does sport a new look, though, with her Moogle outfit. Why is she dressed like that in the new episode? Actually, the Moogle hood draws its reference from the time it was used in Dirge of Cerberus Final Fantasy VII, and Yuffie wears it whenever she is on a covert mission. She might think she's perfectly disguised, but it actually makes her stand out even more in a metropolis like Midgar. I feel that's just very her, and probably why I like it so much. So this is something I was actually already aware of, despite not being that knowledgeable in the game of Dirge of Cerberus, only because I've used this cutscene before in a video where I talked about Yuffie and Vincent. I'm pretty sure it's probably about whether or not they're going to be optional and stuff in, in Remake. This was like probably a good two years ago or some shit at this point. Now, that being said, I didn't exactly know that she apparently wore this because of covert missions or something. Again, that's probably something that is in Dirge of Cerberus, which I'm not that knowledgeable on, but I knew of the hood itself. So what can we expect from Yuffie in FF7R Episode Intermission? The new episode takes place at the same time that Cloud and company are continuing their fight in Midgar. The story follows Yuffie on her mission as a ninja operative, tasked with stealing valuable materia from Shinra. Our goal is to present players with a story that leads up to Yuffie's later encounter with Cloud and his group. In addition, the new episode was an opportunity to dig deeper into the lore of Final Fantasy VII. I would definitely encourage people who've played Final Fantasy VII Remake to experience it when they've completed the game. I think they'll really enjoy it. So I thought this was pretty interesting because I said with our last video that I was anticipating this DLC kind of existed to put Yuffie in the general era. Based on the original game, when you first can run into Yuffie, it's outside of Junon, which isn't that far from Midgar, really. And we get a bit of confirmation here from Hamaguchi that that does seem to be the case. Like he says, that the point of the DLC is to give us a story that leads up to Yuffie's encounter with our group. My kind of prediction with that last video was that she'd kind of be in the Junon area, maybe go into Junon to catch a boat back to Wutai, but, or wherever her boat is, or however the hell she got to Midgar. Or maybe with this DLC, she, you know, we already seen her kind of see Barrett and Tifa and Biggs. Maybe she just intentionally is following our group or something and wants to fight us and steal our material, join our group, whatever. And there at the end, Hamaguchi does say that he wants people to check out the DLC after they've completed a remake, which obviously that's kind of the case with most games. You usually don't play DLC first, but if we want to look a little too much into that, I've been saying for a while that I do think that there's going to be something important within this DLC. Now, what that is remains to be seen, of course, but I think it's going to be more than just her still and materia from Shinra. I think we're going to get, because of intermission being described as the bridge between Part 1 and Part 2, I think there's going to be something pretty crucial maybe towards the end of the DLC. Maybe some sort of follow-up to the ending of Remake or something like that. If I can use a Marvel reference here randomly, think of the snap at the end of Infinity War and the beginning of Endgame with Hawkeye. Like That's what I'm picturing here because us defeating the Whispers at the end of Remake Part 1 has to have some sort of big effect. More than just Zack being alive, I would think. Anyways, videos, that is pretty much the video. Another kind of longer video. Some people say they're into these, man. Some people like the videos being about 10 minutes or more. My videos are only ever really as long as they need to be other than sometimes when I ramble and go on a little tangent about something. So as usual, we're just going to kind of wrap it up. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the minigames. What do you think that is? Do you think there's going to be a Fort Condor minigame? Do you think it's going to be some brand new minigames? Do you think that they're going to be letting Yuffie do some of the minigames we had in Part 1? Because we do see her kind of traversing some of the previous areas that we've experienced in Part 1. Other than dudes, that is the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter, Dash and David YT. I'm my Discord. The links to the social networks are in the description.
end in the outro. Later, guys. I am the champion of the earth and the sky. I am the conqueror of evil. The single white rose of Wu Tai. The one and only Da Cornado. Ladies? Used to care what people thought. But now I care more, and nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that like old train. We in here like Rogaine or leave it like Cobain.